Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. It is 11.38 in Honolulu, 5.38 in New York on Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the island. It is the 28th day of April, 2023 and this is the Weekend Review. With the Federal Reserve expected to raise rates one last time for a quarter percent next week, traders are awaiting confirmation of that news. Although it was reported that central banks were buying gold at a record pace in 2022, interesting numbers coming out for February shows that that trend continues to this day. April proved to be a quiet month, although gold did trade to its record high of the year. It closed up fractionally when compared to the opening price on April the 1st. As of the last week of April, we have June gold at $1,999.40. That's a net gain of 40 cents or 0.02% on the last trading day of the month. The dollar was also fractionally higher, up 0.18% with the index currently fixed at 101.43. Lastly, silver had approximately a half a percent gain, or 12 cents, taking the most active May contract to $25.33.5. This first chart is a monthly chart showing us the long-term swings in gold, beginning back in 2018, when in July gold hit $1,200 and over the next couple of years would rise to the all-time record high of 2088. That was challenged recently, and this month came in with a high just below these record tops that came in in the prior years. Gold traded to a higher low and a higher high than the previous month, but in terms of its open and closing relationship, this is a absolute doji for a monthly chart, a very rare occurrence in which the open and closing price are relatively close together, and it is in the evening star formation, which is foreboding if we don't see this next month challenge and take out the record high. The key to the month of April is to view it in a short-term 240-minute candlestick chart. This chart begins at the end of March. We can see that we were already in a defined uptrend starting at around 1930 with volume beginning to grow. We get our first price surge at the beginning of the month. This took us up to roughly 2050, a correction. And then we had a challenge of the record high at 88 when we saw gold come in approximately $20 shy of that price point at $2,065. However, the end of the month really changed because we had a dramatic drop to a series of lows that came in at around $1,980. We challenged these lows and they held on three occasions in which we actually traded to that price point but closed above it. But at the same time, we saw definitive resistance coming into the market at about 2020 to 2025. We had challenged that top really during the last part of the month, but as we got to the last week of the month, we saw a series of lower highs as well as a couple of higher lows. In other words, the range is compressing once again as traders await the FOMC meeting next week. And that's why I think on a technical basis that May is going to be a pivotal month. First of all, we have to see gold begin to effectively close back above 2000. Then it has a series of tops that it needs to take out or technical resistance at 2020, 2025. If it can manage to take out these highs, it really needs to make a stab at least for 2060 the prior top that came in mid-month, because I believe if it does not, there is a serious possibility that we could see gold prices falter and trade to lower price points. If you like the weekend review, remember to like, share, and subscribe to 
our station. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you after the weekend. Bye-bye.